What's going on guys? This is the Wobble Fett, and welcome to Mechanics Monday, a series where I pick a mechanic to analyze that may be underexplored or unknown to the VGC community. This week, we're going to look at how move accuracy and evasion are calculated. You might be surprised to know that we haven't known how this has worked for over a decade. In Generation 5, when the battle system was revamped, data miners such as Kafotix, Xfer, and Bond697 documented a lot of their research and gave us insight into previously unknown portions of the game, like the damage formula. However, they never got around to documenting accuracy. They left this as a to-do in the PokéCheck disassembly, and it was never completed. However, thanks to new discoveries in Pokémon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, we now know exactly how the game calculates accuracy from Generation 5 through Generation 7, and these mechanics all apply in Generation 8 as well. To start off accuracy checks, we need to make sure the move won't just always hit. If the user or target has no guard, the user has sure hit accuracy from poison type toxic, or the user has used lock on or mind reader, the attack will always hit. Of note is that the poison type toxic check applies not to the move toxic itself, but to the Pokemon as a whole. If you manage to use toxic before another attack, like with instruct or magic bounce, then the follow up move will also have sure hit accuracy. For example, you can see Poketuber Weedle Twin Needle pull this off with magic bounce toxic. Even though the Toxic here isn't successful, that doesn't matter. All the Toxic has to do is be successfully announced. Then, the follow-up Horn Drill is sure hit accurate. It could be any attack, of course, but Horn Drill looks especially flashy. Hi, the Wobble Set from the Future here. They actually patched this in 1.3.1 of Sword and Shield, so yeah, that's a thing. Next, check if the move is sure hit because of its internal move data. For example, Aerial Ace and Clear Smog are sure hit accurate, as well as max moves and the Z moves. This would also include examples like using Thunder and Rain, or Heavy Slam into a target that used Minimize, or Pursuit and the target is switching. Finally, check if the target has Telekinesis. Telekinesis was only around in Gen 7, and it forced the target to be airborne for 3 turns while also making all attacks used against it sure hit accurate. It got axed in Short and Shield though. We're done with all the effects that could cause a target to always land an attack, so now it's time to look up the Pokémon's base accuracy for an attack. For example, Fire Blast has 85 accuracy, and Hypnosis has 60. Next, if the attack is a status move and has greater than 50% accuracy normally, set the accuracy to be 50%. In a similar way, if you're using Thunder or Hurricane in the Sun, the accuracy is also overridden and set directly to 50. Next comes most of the accuracy and evasion modifiers. They're all applied together in the same step, so there's no real distinction between accuracy and evasion, technically speaking. The first thing we want to notice is how the multipliers for these effects aren't exactly normal looking. This division by 4096 is pretty standard for how Pokemon handles modifiers, just like the damage formula, so it's nothing unusual if you're familiar with that already. Of course, this is actually relevant. Notice how Victory Star and Wide Lens, despite both being 1.1 times accuracy boosts, are really different. Victory Star's 4506 modifier comes out to be a little over 1.1, while Wide Lens's 4505 comes out to be a little less than 1.1. Believe it or not, this small difference does affect accuracy calculations. Suppose you have Wide Lens Fire Blast versus Victory Star Fire Blast. Fire Blast is an 85% accurate move. When you apply a modifier, and it's the only one like this, after multiplication, you round the result. But it's a particular kind of rounding where you round down on 0.5 instead of rounding up. I typically refer to this as Poke rounding. So for Victory Star, 85 times 4,506 divided by 4,096 equals slightly over 93.5. The decimal is greater than 0.5, so you would round up here and get 94. But if you do the same thing for Wide Lens, Notice that applying a modifier of 4,505 gives you a different result. Now it's slightly under 93.5, so you round back down to 93. It's only a difference of 1%, but hey, that's still a difference. To give another example, Compound Eyes Sleep Powder would be 98% accurate, not 97%. Sleep Powder has 75 base accuracy, and when you apply a modifier of 5,325 to it, you see that we get 75 times 5,325 divided by 4,096, which comes out to just be barely over 97.5, so it rounds up to 98. The process we've done so far in each of these examples is called applying a modifier. So that's all well and good, but what happens when you have multiple modifiers present? Say for example you're attacking into a Sand Veil Bright Powder Garchomp. In that case, 
you have to do what's called chaining the modifiers. Once you have chained them, then you can proceed and apply this chained modifier. Generally speaking, you chain modifiers in order of field effects, then abilities, then items. So in our case, the order would be Sand Veil, an ability, then Bright Powder, an item. Start with the numerator of Sand Veil's modifier, 3277. Multiply 3277 by the next modifier in our list, which in this case is 3686 for Bright Powder. Then divide by 4096 and round the result, but use normal rounding conventions of rounding up on 0.5, unlike the previous Poke rounding. Our new modifier comes out to be 2948.9 something, which rounds up to 2949. Finally, we would apply this new 2949 modifier to the move's accuracy. Let's say we are using a 100% accurate move like Ice Beam. That means the Ice Beam is Poke Round 100 times 2949 divided by 4096, which is 71.99 something and it rounds up to 72. Doing this chaining process matters, especially when you have a lot of multipliers. The rounding mistakes will get amplified at each step if you don't do the chaining process the same way each time. But what if you had multiple modifiers that are abilities or multiple items? For example, what if you had a compound eyes Pokemon with a Victory Star ally attacking into a confused target with Tangled Feet? That's three different abilities. Well, in that case, the game picks the order to chain the modifiers based on what I'll call the summary screen speed of the target. Summary screen speed is what you see when you look at the Pokemon summary. Nothing else applies, not speed boosts and drops from things like agility, not things like Tailwind, and not speed swap either. So in our scenario, if the compound dies Pokemon were faster than Victory Star, and Victory Star was faster than Tangled Feet, the modifiers would be chained from compound dies to Victory Star to Tangled Feet. The order switches depending on the Pokemon's speed. But what if at least two of these Pokemon's speed tie? Well, the game doesn't actually use an RNG-based speed tie here. Instead, what it does is check which Pokemon has been on the field longer. If the Pokemon has been on the field longer, it wins the tie. But what if both Pokemon speed tie and were sent out on the field at the same time, like at the start of the game? In that case, Whoever is the host of the match will be considered to have sent out their Pokemon first. This is effectively port priority, if you're familiar with that term from the Smash Bros. community. You can see who the host of the game is, by which player's trainer card is on the left of the screen when you're loading into the battle. It's also the player who controls the stadium background of the match. But what if both Pokemon that speed tie were sent out as leads from the same side? Well, then the Pokemon who is sent out on the left side wins the tie. I guess you said it's name first when you threw out the Pokeball, so it kind of makes sense, but not really. But let's take a big step back here so we don't miss the forest for the trees. There's a good bit of technical details going on here, but we can sum it up by saying that we chain the modifiers and apply it. Once we've done so, we have our new accuracy value. Note that this value could be higher than 100 at this stage of our calculation process. Next up, we come to stat boosts and drops. Accuracy and evasion boosts are combined here into a number that can range from 0 to 12. This 0 to 12 is what determines the multiplier that comes next. You can see, for example, that a value of 0 gives you a 3 9 multiplier, or just times 1 third, a value of 6 gives you a 3 third multiplier, or just times 1, and so on. The biggest point that I want to emphasize is that the game does not do this for both accuracy and evasion independently. Rather, it combines them together and applies it only once. This means, for example, that having minus 6 accuracy is identical to having minus 6 accuracy and the opponent having plus 6 evasion. It also means that same scenario is identical to having minus 3 accuracy and the opponent having plus 3 evasion. You can only go plus or minus 6 in either direction. Important to mention for evasion is that a number of effects will ignore evasion boosts. Keen Eye, Unaware, and moves like Sacred Sword or Darkest Lariat ignore both positive and negative evasion stat changes on the target. Moves that identify the target, like Odor Sleuth, ignore positive evasion stat changes on the target. In those situations, you would just subtract zero when it comes to evasion. When multiplying the stat boost change, rather than rounding the result at all, you just ignore the decimal completely, flooring it. 
So for example, if you have a 55% accurate move at plus 2 accuracy, that means multiply 55 times 5 divided by 3 and floor the result. So 91.66666 repeating becomes 91 and doesn't round up to 92. Finally, after multiplying by the stat booster drop, if the value is bigger than 100, just set it to 100. We're in the home stretch now, only a couple extra modifiers to go. If the move has its accuracy boosted by Mickleberry, you apply a modifier of 4915. You may ask yourself, why is Mickleberry applied here, and not with all the other items like Bright Powder or Wide Lens? And the answer to that is I have absolutely no idea. That's just what it does. If Mickleberry's calculation made the accuracy go above 100 again, bring it back down to 100. If you're playing in game and your Pokémon has a high affection towards you, you then subtract 10 from the percentage, but you can't go below zero. This doesn't impact competitive play at all, but I mention it here for completeness. Finally, the game picks a number at random from 0 through 99. If your accuracy value is greater than the number the game randomly picked, congratulations, your move will land. Let's review what we've done overall so we can see exactly what's going on. First, check if the attack has to hit with certainty. Next, look at the move's base accuracy and set it to 50 if it's Wonder Skin or Thunder or Hurricane in the Sun. Next, chain and apply most of the accuracy modifiers, including gravity, abilities, and items. After that, multiply by the stat changes made to the accuracy and evasion stats combined. Check for Mickleberry and in-game affection, and you've got your accuracy value. You'll notice that I didn't bring up Oko moves like Horn Drill or Sheer Cold as we were going along. That's because Oko moves don't do any of this. They simply start at 30, or 20 in the case of non-ice type Sheer Cold, and add the difference in levels to the moves accuracy. For example, if you use Horn Drill at level 50 versus another level 50 Pokémon, that's going to be just 30% accurate. But a level 100 Horn Drill versus a level 50 target would have 80% accuracy, because there's a difference of 50 levels involved. And that's all there is to know about accuracy. Got questions about anything in this video? Feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. I'd like to give a shout out to Battle Mechanics researchers Marty and Sadistic Mystic for helping me in this research, as well as a very special thanks to Pre for helping me understand more completely what was going on with speed determining the order of chaining modifiers. Until next time, have a good one.